much um, and thanks to everyone who has attended. I know this has been an absolutely heartbreaking week for a lot of us who watched the MENA region with the Turkey-Syria earthquake and our bandwidth is limited. Um, so the fact that you guys came out to listen to um, a, a panel about yet another depressing set of developments in another MENA country um, is, is very valuable and very valued. Um, I think Tunisia has been systematically ignored which is part of the reason why we find ourselves in this sorry state of affairs. Tunisia, it's sometimes forgot, shockingly, was the first and only Arab country to organically, from the bottom up, create a democracy. Tunisia had 10 years of freedom from the 2011 revolution until Kaya's Syed made his presidential coup on July 25th, 2021. Its democracy was flawed, fragile, unconsolidated, but it existed and it was real. And its loss is one of the most massive losses for the MENA region of this young century. Um, since the, the coup of July 25th, 2021, Kaya Said has been on a long march towards repression. His march has been steady, it's been predictable, but this weekend we've seen a dramatic upsurge a dramatic escalation in the level of repression that he's using against critics across the ideological spectrum. Since Saturday, numerous people, we don't have a full list yet, but approximately 20 people, it's thought, have been arrested or abducted from their homes, including the head of Tunisia's largest, most popular, and most important independent media station, Mosaic FM. Also, members of the trade union have found themselves arrested or abducted. Members of Tunisia's main opposition party, and Nafa have been arrested or abducted, sometimes violently from their homes since Saturday and earlier. Today, we find ourselves in a situation in Tunisia where two out of the three top leaders of Nafa, Tunisia's main opposition party, are in detention. Ali al Rayed, the number two of that party, has been languishing in prison since mid-December, and no Western democracy I'm aware of has made any statement about it. That's part of the reason why Syed feels empowered to move on and to escalate in the way that he's done. Um, amidst all of this, um, it's very important to contemplate the role of the European Union and the United States. Those of us who are scholars of North African politics and recent history are very familiar with certain governments in the European Union making security-based or interest-based calculations regarding the Southern Mediterranean, North Africa. They're most often concerned about preventing migration to European shores and preventing terrorism. And based on those two sets of calculations, they have often been quite cozy with dictators in North Africa. That's nothing new, it's nothing surprising, especially when it comes to France and Italy. And some would argue that's understandable given their, their security interests. I would argue it's still a short-termist calculation um, and, and not a calculation that serves French or Italian interests, but at least it's more readily understandable. The United States, however, has no clear cross-cutting interests that would necessitate, or even logically argue for necessitating um, apologetics for Tunisia's new dictatorship. Tunisia is not relevant for the Israel portfolio. Tunisia is rich in no natural resource that matters for the United States. I have argued that Tunisia, there's no country in the world actually that represents a clearer litmus test of the Biden administration's commitment or lack thereof to democracy than Tunisia. And on this clearest of, clearest of litmus tests, the Biden administration has signally failed. Um, I want to talk about its messaging first, then I'll move on to areas of cooperation that need to, to remain paused or be cut. I'll move on to potential carrots and then a variety of areas in which we might want to consider sanctioning or, or reviewing um, the situation. First, the messaging. Um, the Biden administration's messaging has been more pro-dictatorial than the governments of France, Italy, and even shockingly at times, Russia. Um, I'll mention a few low lights um, that I think we all need to be aware of. On April 5th of 2022, last year, as 
democratically elected MPs in the parliament that Kaya Saev shut with army tanks in July 2021 were being dragged before an anti-terrorism unit. Um, our ambassador, the United States ambassador in Tunisia, Donald Blom, allowed himself to be garlanded in a ceremony that was widely photographed in which Kaya Saied literally placed an award around his neck. This was just days after democratically elected MPs, dozens of them, were dragged in front of anti-terrorism units. Their crime? Convening parliament, the democratically elected parliament, the only legitimate institution in the country, to meet virtually and denounce Kaya Saied's coup. On July 23rd last year, 2022, just two days before Kaya Syed forced through a new constitution to replace Tunisia's painstakingly written democratic 2014 constitution, a constitution that he single-handedly authored himself, the United States Embassy in Tunis had nothing to post on its social media except turtle rescue pictures. No statement was made. On December 18th of last year, 2022, um, just the, the day after Kaya Saied organized the first round of votes for his new Potemkin parliament, an election that was not freely and fairly conducted, an election in which, I kid you not, no political party in the country was allowed to compete. Um, the United States government, the State Department, Ned Price, stated that that election that farcical election for a sham parliament, quote, represents an essential step towards restoring the country's democratic trajectory. Absurd, insulting to Tunisians across the ideological spectrum. On February 2nd, earlier this month, the second round of those sham elections was held and the State Department almost copy and pasted its comment from December, despite the loud cries against that wording um, from myself and much more importantly from many Tunisians. Um, the State Department said that those elections represented, quote, another step in the important and essential process of restoring the country's democratic checks and balances. These statements constitute such a radical break from any shred of reality as to rise to the level, I would argue, of diplomatic malpractice. There is a growing recognition in Washington that the Biden administration's messaging has been off, has been worse than almost any other country, certainly than any Western democracy so far. And yet the State Department keeps churning out these statements. The messaging needs to change. The signaling, the symbolism needs to change. There should be no high level meetings with Kaya Syed. There should be no more invitations of Kaya Syed to things like the Africa Summit. On the level of signaling and symbolism, the United States needs to be very clear because in the absence of that, Kaya Syed interprets all of these statements as blank checks. These statements are clearing the path for him, at least in terms of foreign policy and international relations, to, to drag pro-democracy Tunisians of all backgrounds in front of anti-terrorism units, in front of military courts. So we can't really speak out against Kaya Syed if we're tacitly enabling him or even applauding him as the State Department's um, statements in December and, and February most certainly did. Right now, the MCC is cut. This is uh, the Millennium Challenge Grant, which is an important vehicle of aid to Tunisia. Um, the MCC's methodology necessitates that it remains cut. The MCC is a reward specifically for democratic improvements. Tunisia has made none. Tunisia is a dictatorship ruled by personal fiat of one man. It has been so since July 25th, 2021. And until that changes, as long as Kaya side stays at the helm controlling the show, there is absolutely no reason for the United States to intervene really to support this new dictatorship in Tunisia by unpausing that grant. I think it's important to recognize that there is a logic of um, passivity in Tunisia. There is a logic of Cold War thinking that has returned to Washington um, that has created a situation where there are actually some on the ground and, and at the State Department who are doing their best to help Tunisia do enough of a, of a facadical dance for Congress that Congress restores 
funds for Tunisia, that things like the MCC get restored. Um, Congress needs to look very skeptically at statements coming from the Biden administration. It needs to understand that there are people who are, are really trying to unlock that funding because they believe that if the MCC does not come back, Tunisia is going to be vulnerable for geostrategic interference from China and Russia. Now, I think it's worth considering that argument um, because Chinese and, and Russian interference would be, um, I think, even less helpful for Tunisia than US interference at this point. But when we really try to weigh the likelihood of that interference and break it down, you know, if, if the US stops something like the MCC for good, what is China and Russia going to do in the next year or in the next 10 years? Sit down with me, game it out for me. You'll often see that there's not much there there. I think it's a post hoc rationale um, in, in search of an argument, really. You know, it's, it's a justification in search of a reason. Um, there is a kind of inertia and muscle memory of keeping a lot of these structures in place. Um, it might even be as simple for some people as, as they're comfortable in Tunisia and, and you know, don't, don't want to have bad relations with the government, don't want to have to pull their kids out of school. But you don't, it's very difficult to get hard and fast um, reasons. The, the closest thing I've gotten to a Chinese or Russian threat is the, the idea that at some point within the next decade, China might make a bid for the Radis port. And it might use the Radis port as a listening center in the Mediterranean. Is that enough of a threat to completely undermine the MCC's methodology and meaning and actively interfere in Tunisian affairs to help aid and abet Kaya Saeed's new dictatorship? I'm not convinced yet, but if someone has a better argument, I'm, I'm very happy to hear it, but I'm not convinced. Um, so I think the MCC obviously needs to remain paused until it sunsets in June, shouldn't come back. I think Tunisia's non-NATO ally status should also be on the chopping block. That's mainly symbolic, but there's there's no reason why Tunisia under a dictator as erratic, as paranoid, as destabilizing, and in many ways as anti-Western as this one should be a major non-NATO ally. Um, things that, that could be potential carrots that there's a real argument for, there should be humanitarian aid. The United States gave humanitarian aid to Tunisia under COVID to help secure food supplies. Um, and USAID can redirect humanitarian aid funds that might have been part of the MCC package towards Tunisia to, to alleviate some of the desperate economic problems, cost of living problems that Kaya Saeed's leadership is helping create. Um, there are a set of things that should be under much closer review. I would argue our security funding to Tunisia should be under much closer review. A lot of it came under uh, understandable, justifiable pretense. For example, counterterrorism funding to help Tunisia fight ISIS and jihadism in 20, 2013 to 2015, very understandable. But a lot of that counterterrorism funding now is almost assuredly going to fund the anti-terror units to which so many peaceful people who've simply made critical posts on Facebook, like some of those arrested this weekend, are being dragged as we speak. There's a real likelihood that US and EU money for security and counterterrorism is now being used to as an essential pillar of Caius side's dictatorship. Caius is using the language, the modalities, and in fact, the institutions of counterterrorism um, and of the military, which the US also partners with and supports through things like military courts to repress peaceful critics. So there should be intensive review and oversight of all security funding to Tunisia. From what I've heard in Washington, that review does not exist. People might tell you it does, but there's no clear evidence that that's happening. The review should be conducted by the Pentagon, by Congress, and by the State Department. It's important to remember that we're really baby steps away from an Egypt 2013 scenario or from a Ben Ali in the 1990s scenario. We are baby steps at this point, especially after this weekend. There should also be Magnitsky sanctions against the people who are um, most powerfully aiding Syed. These include the justice minister and the minister of interior. Um, I'll conclude by saying this, the United States needs to consider unintended consequences of its help, its tacit and explicit help, both rhetorically and financially, for Kaya Syed's regime. 
the United States is not a disinterested or unengaged actor. In fact, it's overly engaged in all the wrong ways right now, both rhetorically and practically. I'm not making an argument here for violating Tunisian sovereignty. Tunisian sovereignty is the most important thing, and I, I wish that there were Tunisians on this panel. I've spent four months in Tunisia interviewing hundreds of people across the ideological spectrum. I've been to Washington, to London, to Paris, interviewing people in government. I've interviewed people in a lot of different embassies. I've been trying to reflect some of their views here. But it's important to recognize that the US is not neutral or disinterested, and that it's actively aiding and abetted, abetting Kaiaside at this moment. The US could be creating a self-fulfilling prof prophecy in Tunisia, where it's making come true its very fears of a pro-Russia or pro-China dictatorship. Kayasaid is extraordinarily paranoid. He's very erratic. Um, he has no economic plan. He's highly destabilizing in the Southern Mediterranean and regionally. And he's Western alienated in his thought and his rhetoric and his modalities of partnership. Um, there's no reason to believe that any of that's going to change. So it's very important to consider that, you know, with something like an IMF grant, which might very well unlock further funding from Saudi Arabia and the UAE, the UAE, sorry, the, the, the European Union and the United States might think that they're securing short-term stability in Tunisia, preventing migrants, et cetera, et cetera, preventing China and Russia from gain, gaining a geostrategic foothold from Washington's perspective. But in actuality, they could be helping prop up his young dictatorship and um, calcify it in ways that could harm US interests and most importantly, the Tunisian people for decades to come.